Hey everyone, today we're doing something a little bit different. I don't think we've done one of these bikes on the channel before. It's a full suspension retro rig. So this is a specialized stump jumper FSR from around 1994. These come with a alloy rear triangle and the front triangle is chromoly steel. It's pretty tidy overall, apart from there's some rust by the lower shock mount. It doesn't look too bad though, just a little bit of rust underneath the paint. So we'll probably strip that off and see what it's like underneath. The bike is this really cool two-tone sort of olive color. So the front half sort of looks more gray, but in person you can see a bit of a green tinge to it. So the bike came with this Rossi Racing Genesis damper. This is an aftermarket upgrade that the previous owner did. So the shock, I think is about seven or eight years old and it hasn't had much use. So the frame did come with a late 90s RockShox Judy, but I sold that and replaced it with this Marzocchi Bomber. This is a Z2 Lite, going by the numbers on the fork. It's also, I think it's a 98. Sort of hard to see there. The decals make it look like a Z3 Lite, but the serial number and the stamping on the fork says that it's a Z2. Comes with this lightweight brace. The stanchions are in good shape and the fork feels pretty good, but we're gonna flush it out with some fresh oil, thanks to a mate. So we take it over to his place and change that out. So it's missing the adjuster knobs on the top, but you can do that by hand anyway. And they still have aftermarket replacements. So the bike did come with a couple of little upgrades. So I think this is a little titanium seat post clamp. I'm unsure though. Could just be a nice alloy one but the rear wheels are pretty cool and the front wheel it's a mavic 217 front rim so the rear wheel is this old tnt so it's a titanium hub shell and they actually came with ring glaze skewers as well and as it turns out these are titanium skewers so quite a nice pickup included with the bike what the bike didn't come with was a seat post <laughs> but luckily I had one sitting around that is the right diameter so it's 29.4 just fits in there just perfectly so the frame is a little bit dirty you can see around the pivots and stuff some of the grease has worked its way out as it does um, but first of all we're going to tackle this rust and then we're going to polish the frame up clean it up all nice so you can see it's not in too bad shape, but there are like some surface scratches and stuff. Disassembly went pretty smoothly. Um, I couldn't get this this pivot all the way out, so the bolt undid, but um, it didn't want to come out from the inside, so we just left that one there. But all the other ones came out. They have the, these little bushings and stuff in place. So we're not going to service the shock today because this is the last two days before a group ride so we're a little bit pressed for time if we had some more time i wouldn't feel so bad but if something goes wrong with the replacing the fluids then i won't have enough time to get it fixed so as it turns out all of the pivots have these little grease ports if i'd have known that um, i mean i still would have pulled it apart but for the group ride i probably would have just um, push sense. some grease in and that would have kept it going good enough for the group ride at least and then afterwards I would have cleaned it out but I pulled it apart and cleaned out all the pivots and everything apart from this lower one because this is the one that was sort of stuck and just didn't want to budge so I thought we'll just leave this one put some fresh grease in and leave it for the group ride so some of the rust is a bit more easily accessible than others this part out here we can wire brush down and then treat it um, the stuff on the inside we're not really going to be able to wire brush that we could use some paint strip or something to get rid of like the excess bits and then rust convert that this upper mount looks okay compared to the lower one the rest of the bike is in pretty good condition too there's a couple little spots but not really any big deals and then once we've done all the rust prep and stuff we will go over and polish the whole bike just to bring back some of the shine that it used to have so we're going over with some paint stripper now that can give us better access to the rust 
because it's where the suspension mount is, I feel it's best to do as best as we can, prevent the rust from f further creating issues down the line. Um, we really don't want this to be like a rust hole in the future. It'd be really awkward to fix, like you'd have to debraze this mount, take it off and then fix the hole up. Um, so yeah, we're just going to strip the paint off and then rust convert that, see how bad it is. Doesn't look too bad really. It's actually really cool that you can see the brazing now as well. So just some surface rust and it's sort of like wormed out a bit. Some rust converter will do a really good job at stopping this and just keeping it good for the future really. This stuff just brushes on and then it converts any rust. You don't have to worry too much about getting it on non-rusted surfaces because it doesn't really do anything to them. So that's it, you can see it um, transforming the rust. It just turns into like this black surface really. You can see there are a couple of spots where I didn't get as good coverage as I should. So once I've done all the rusty spots, I go over the frame with basically like some cream polish. This is basically the same thing. This is like a, a scratch remover. You can just do this by hand or if you have like a random orbital polisher or you know some other kind of power tools that feel safe enough to use on a bike then go for that um, i just feel like i have better control especially going over decals and stuff if they're already chipped up and stuff i don't want to further damage that by you know messing them up with power tools so you can see there are some deeper scratches but i don't want to go through the clear coat and then end up messing up the paint so we're just going to leave it about here so it's restored some of the shine, which looks really cool. And thanks to a mate, Nick, who serviced the bomber fork. It's got some disgusting fluid out, and we've got some fresh fluid in there. These are the only two clips I had, but, but you can see the old nasty fluid. Next up, we're going to polish up the crown of the fork. So I'm just using some auto sole and just doing this by hand. I could disassemble the fork, like pull the legs out again, and then do it that way. But this is going to be a usable bike, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Auto sole on a rag does a really good job. If you want to go a little bit further, then you would probably have to do some sanding and stuff, or some other different compounds for polishing. Auto sole just has like a bit of a, it's kind of like a fine paste, so it's got like a little bit of grit in it. And this is the result, just with auto sole. <laughs> you can see me there. Normally I seal this up with some wax or something, but auto sole prevents oxidization anyway. So just that alone does a pretty good job. cleaning up the brace this is just dirty so I just clean this off with some um, light detergent just some soapy water I quite like doing this by hand but if you have a parts washer you want to do it like the easy way then go ahead using a little bit of blue Loctite to keep these bolts <laughs> from backing off I use those in the pinch bolts for the legs as well just snug those up the headset we'll be using in this bike is a pretty cheap one, but it sort of looks like a Chris King. I compared it to a Chris King side by side that I have, and it looks basically identical. I'm sure it's not the same quality, but I mean, the worst that's going to happen is like the bearings are going to die at some point, and we can just replace those anyway. So just putting in the cups with this homemade tool. This is just a threaded rod with some spaces and a couple of nuts on it. I filed away a spot on the top of the threaded rod so I can hold that with a spanner just so it doesn't keep spinning when you're tightening it up. And yeah, just doing it in a cup at each time. Make sure to use some grease or some uh, anti seize to make sure that the cups don't get stuck in there because it is a steel frame. And steel will always rust at some point and you know, galvanic corrosion between the dissimilar metals, alloy cups versus the steel frame. Just as a clip-on or push-on crown race, it's quite a cool looking headset, it feels really nice.
Another first on the channel, we're going to be using these old Magura hydraulic rim brakes on the bike. They feel okay, or well, they did until I went to put them on, and it seems like one of them needs a bleed. They still move okay, but the first couple of pumps, they don't really do anything. The brake pads are pretty shot too. I could probably file these down if I didn't have some spares available. But they just pop out, pretty easy to swap out. I have some Cool Stop Salmon Compound replacements for them. I really like the Salmon Compound Cool Stop pads on my other rim brake bikes, so it makes sense to try them on this as well. Should be a bit nicer on the, the rims as well, being that Salmon Compound. So if you haven't fiddled with these before, they have a quick release on one side, and then the other side is just regular. And then it's best to have a brace on them because they do exert quite a bit of force against the rim. So make sure you've got this bolt that lets the quick release sort of grab on. And then once you undo the quick release, you can just pull it off the bike and the bolt stays in place on the bike. So setting them up, um, screwing this in most of the way and then sort of test fitting it and then put that side on and then tighten it down a little bit more and then push the quick release and then you can sort of get the right tension on it um, for me it wasn't the, the bolt wasn't fully in otherwise the quick release is too tight so just snug it up and then the quick release will work just as it should they're a little bit they're not difficult to set up but it takes a little bit of time or a little bit of fiddling the first time. So you can set the height and the angle See, this one with the, the regular bolt. The other one. And then this piston part sort of adjusts and swivels as well. So you undo that a little bit and then they can pivot around and also yeah, go in every which direction pretty much. So I guess the previous owner lost one of the bolts. Also those little, uh, what do they call them? There's like a little sleeve around the piston. They can wear out. So I've got some, but I didn't eat them. Well, I, I got them afterwards. <laughs> James gave me some on the group ride. So I'll be swapping those out. Just makes adjustment a bit better. So cutting down a bolt, because I didn't have one the right length. So just chopping down. It's just an M5 bolt. So after the rust converter I went over with some grey primer, I thought it would sort of blend the bike a bit better, um, but it didn't look right, so I mixed up some paint and just brushed it on. I couldn't quite get the right colour, it's, it's, it's so grey, but it's got like a tinge of green into it, um, but I didn't have the right colours to mix, but this will do for now, looks a bit better than just <laughs> like the rust converter, if you squint. So cleaning up all the suspension linkages and stuff and then we're going to put those back on the bike just a little bit of soapy water some degreaser they're in pretty good condition just a little bit of excess grease and stuff but no wear marks no marring or anything like that so should be in pretty good nick So just reassembling things now, making sure everything's got a, a healthy amount of grease on it. I guess we can grease stuff afterwards because it's got those ports or the, the holes and everything. But um, just to make sure that grease gets in everywhere, I put some grease on while assembling as well. A little bit of blue Loctite to make sure the bolts stay in place. It's got a really cool look to this frame. I really like the color of it as well. It is technically a bit too small for me, but we're using Surly Sunrise handlebars on it, which have a bit of rise to them. And then just a decent amount of seat posts as well, just to sort of upsize the bike for me. I didn't really plan on getting one of these, but I saw it pop up on Trade Me, so I grabbed it while I could. 
pumping some grease in there. Pretty much just pump it in until it pops out the sides. It builds up a bit of pressure, so you'll get some pushback afterwards, but yeah, making sure there's a decent amount in there. It's quite cool to see how these work, so... There's a bit of a ridge line, so some grease fills up and stays in there, it doesn't just get all pushed out. It's got these bushings. Had to tap this one a little bit. That's about it. <laughs> Moving back to the brakes now. Um, so in New Zealand, the right hand lever is the front brake, but I like it the other way around, um, just for wheelie control and stuff. So apparently, for some reason, you can reuse the Magura olives. I don't know if that's true or not, but I've seen people talk about it and just reuse them. Um, people with a lot more knowledge about Magura brakes than myself, so we're just going to go see how it goes. Yeah, slightly different design. So the brakes do feel okay, but we are going to bleed them. They take like an M6 fitting, and you just need one syringe apparently. So you just bleed it up from the end of the system, so the one that just has one cable going in. Let me shove that one in that side. So no fluid actually came out when we pulled the hoses out, so they must have like a little bit of a bit of resistance, just enough to hold vacuum on the fluid. So we probably don't need to bleed them, but I've got some mineral fluid anyway. It's not the Magura stuff, but um, people use water back in the day in old Magura brakes, so apparently the water changes the lever feel a bit and makes it a bit snappier and stuff for trials riding and stuff. Um, but we're just going to use mineral oil, because that's what's best for them. Yeah, they, they work perfectly fine. They're pushing out evenly and with pressure, but we're going to flush the fluid anyway. So just undo this at the lever. You can just let it drip, but we've got a little um, funnel here with a catch, so we're just going to let it catch into that. Awkward to get it there. Oh, the fluid's starting. Yeah. When I cracked the bolt at the back end, it released the vacuum in the system, so it let a bit of fluid out here, and it looks disgusting. So apparently, you don't need to hold the pistons in place. Pistons aren't moving at all. Push it through slowly. Um, we'll see the color change up here once the new fluid is pushed through. Bunch of air. Bunch of air. So you can see those bubbles there. kind of disappointing. I was hoping it was just going to be straight the pink, but I guess because the old fluid has sort of gunked up the hose and stuff. Mm. Lame. Very lame. Kind of smells like vegetable oil mixed with like a little bit of diff oil or something like that. I don't know. So one of the issues with converting to these Magura hydraulic rim brakes is that you don't have the cable guides for the hose. So you can get these stick-on ones, but um, I forgot to get some. So we're just going to MacGyver something. 
So instead of using a cable tie just around the whole tube, I decided to sort of clip them on to the existing cable guides. So we've got it from here going to the left side. So there's a bit of a bend, but because it's hydraulic, it's probably not going to care. Um, as long as it's not sort of jostling around. I'll just keep an eye on the wear there. I can always put some tape to sort of prevent that. Um, and then you can't see it behind there, but it does sort of kick out a little bit. So that's why. I, so I think I'll get one of those stick-on sort of cable guides. Um, and then over here, just attaches to this one and then goes back around. Stupid that they put tiny little screws for the cable release sort of window. And also just the design of it is stupid anyway. So you have like this proprietary little window with these stupid little screws. And then it's like fidgety to get in and out. You sort of have to, but it feels pretty cool though. Push it through, get my magnet here, and then try and suck them out. And just grab them all out. Oh, there is a hair in there. <laughs> sure that, that cone is tight on there just to make sure that the adjustment will stay then a little bonus for good luck So just, yeah, there we go. <laughs> just sort of barely clears the bearings. Thirteen, so snug, and then back a little bit. And then sixteen on the outer one. Snug it up, then check it. It was about this time that I realized I didn't have any spare rim tape. So in a pinch, you can just use electrical tape. I normally use the first layer um, backwards, so the adhesive side is sticking out. That way it doesn't get all sticky and stuff on the rim. But yeah, just do a couple of laps of that, and then punch through the valve in there. So the tyres that we're going to be using on the bike are Terra 1 Ride T1 tyres. Really sweet old reproduction new tyre. So they're made by V Tire Co. These are the 2.125 model, but I think they're doing a V2, which is going to be 1.9 or thereabouts. Because apparently these are a bit too wide to fit in some of the uh, frames that could only sort of fit. 1.9s in them so you can run these tires either in the front or the rear based on which way you have it rotated uh, it doesn't look like the tread pattern is directional so it might be something to do with the casing it might just act better as a front or rear based on which way you have it just assembling the rear brakes now putting in the new brake pads and then we're going to swap out the cassette and get the rear wheel in the bike so this is an 11 to 40 tooth, and we're going to be rocking a 36 tooth chain ring. On a 26 inch wheel, this gives me a pretty good gearing. I do ride single speed off road sometimes, so having like seven extra gears is a bit of a bonus. 
So it's not quite at the right height. Setting up the rear brake, it's a little bit harder to do with a brace on it. So because the brace is attached to one of the securing nuts for like the top portion of the Magura brake, you sort of have to have the brace in there and tightened up, but you also don't want it completely secure. So this is a little bit fiddly for me. So having the brace tightened up, you couldn't adjust like the pivot or anything of the piston, but eventually I got there. I don't know if they're supposed to be towed in a little bit because they are rim brakes but they're a little bit different and the pad sort of has like a tiny bit of movement to it we're just going to leave it to where it feels good and then if it's too noisy um, we're going to have to adjust things while I had the frame apart I did use some penetrol inside of it this is sort of like a rust treatment or a rust inhibitor unlike rust converter it doesn't really treat rust it sort of seals it and prevents it or helps to prevent ah oh, fuck I didn't see this at all what the hell that's so stupid what because the piston was pivoted at a certain angle uh, the brace was a little bit too close to it it was coming into contact so I just put a couple of washers underneath the brace in between the brace and the brake mount and that spaced it up enough so that the hose wouldn't rub on it so onto the bottom bracket and the cranks. I did get the bottom bracket out of the frame. I just wanted to pull it out just to make sure that everything was okay in there. There was a little bit of surface rust, but I just cleaned it off. And yeah, the penetrol would help prevent that in the future. Making sure there's grease everywhere. I do a light coating of grease on the tapers. These are the cranks we're going to be using for the bike. Um, I wanted to use a, this narrow wide chain ring, which is a 94 BCD. I just had this sitting around in my parts bin. Um, but as it turns out, these cranks are 110 BCD. So they come in two different sizes. These are the ones that I thought they were, and I just took this chain ring off this crank. So M563 are the 94 BCD ones, and M560 are the 110 BCD ones. So I'm just going to slap these cranks back on. I probably should have painted them. Um, just because they are painted with matte black spray paint and chipped off eventually. But instead of just going through and painting them and then having to wait for the paint to dry, we've got one of these Posco pens. If I wanted it to be more permanent, uh, I would have to clear coat over the top because the Posco sort of wears off. So I could have used these cranks as these are the 563s, but I really wanted the black Dior Alex ones because this is the factory group set that came on the bike. Um, it did come with the silver cranks, but I like the look of the black ones more. It suits some of the parts that are on the bike, so I wanted to go with the black cranks. So There's cleaning up the red derailleur now. I had this derailleur on the old Canada build, so it was in pretty good condition. I just needed to clean up the jockey wheels, really. So it's a bit easier to take them off rather than cleaning them on the derailleur just scraping it off. It's so satisfying.
So I know these Ridge Railers clear a 36 tooth cassette, but I didn't know if I could, you know, use a longer B tension screw or anything to make it sort of clear the 40 tooth. Sometimes you can get it to work on some derailleurs and then it will just barely slightly rub the jockey wheel on the big tooth. But at the same time, I'm not going to be using the 40 tooth that not that often, so it's not really a big deal if it's rubbing a little bit. So we won't know until we get the chain on if it's going to work that well. So I thought we'll just put it on and test it. First we've got to take off that disgusting sticky rust prevention grease that they put on. I just use some degrees of it, you can use some WD-40 or something and just wipe it off. So just sizing up the chain now, but because this is a full suspension bike, I'm going to take the air out of the rear shock, compress the suspension, and then check the chain length again, just to make sure that the current or the chain length that I break it to is going to be long enough for the full suspension travel. All of that travel, mate. So I compressed the suspension and then used a strap to keep the rear end up, and then I checked it from there. There to there, plus two, so one, two, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's the same length. But considering this only has, what, like 40 millimeters of rear travel, I didn't think it was going to be an issue, but you never know with like the suspension geometry and angles and everything. So I just wanted to check. It's easy to check and you might as well, like if you don't know the suspension geometry or anything like that. Um, with the modern like 160 mil travel rear bikes and stuff, you have to add like four or six links if it's um, Eagle. So yeah, it pays to check. As it sits, we've got about five hours left to get the bike all buttoned up and stuff, but chain adjust the gears real quick. I can take it for like a little ride this afternoon, so I still need to pack and stuff, but I don't want to, you know, cram too much in. Um, yeah, excited, 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 excited. This is, I rode a 98 or 97 Specialized FSR a couple of weeks back now. It was the green one, really cool looking bike. Um, I passed that on to a mate, so I won't be doing a video on that. Um, but this is pretty cool. I like the Cromoly anyway. This is definitely cooler, but it's not as usable. I guess it's not as capable as the later model FSRs. But yeah. So there's a bit of info on the Rissy Racing site as to how to set the sag and pressure. I did a little bit of testing before I pulled the bike down just by <laughs> just bouncing around in my backyard on it and about 150 psi felt good for me. So that's what we're going to set it at as like a baseline for the ride. So it didn't want to shift on its own up into the lowest gear. So we're going to unbolt the red derailleur and put in a wolf tooth road link. Just a little, little um, derailleur hanger dropper thing. So that just puts the upper jockey wheel basically a little bit lower um, by shifting the whole derailleur down a little bit. With this little link, uh, the rear derailleur I know can shift up to a 46 tooth. Most of these old Shimano, like this era, will clear a 46 tooth with this link. So once that was installed, it would shift it nicely making sure that we could put some chain lube on, otherwise that chain is going to rust off. I did have a Bullet Bros chain tensioner that I wanted to put on the bike as well, because there's no clutch, but I couldn't find it, um, unfortunately, before the group ride. So we're going to experience some chain slap. Not only are they comfy and pretty good price as well, they're hard wearing and stuff, but they match <laughs> the seat that I'm going to be using pretty well. Also the pedals, these are Odyssey PC twisted pedals. So they have like a little twisted sort of design to them. 
some isopropyl alcohol. Hairspray works great too. It's not coming out. So, sounds like I'm using a lot, but on the inside. Use the one that's not installed to get about the right length. Because if they're stretched a bit too far, they can sort of wear prematurely, end up tearing and stuff. I also got a bottle cage, I think. Now that the bike is all done, it's time to take it down for the group ride. You can hear a bit of a squeak. I don't know if that's the rear shock or if it's one of the pivots. It's got a bit of a squeak to it. But the bike ran really well until the second day that I decided to take it out for like another little ride with my partner. But you'll see what happens at the end of the video. So yeah, I'll see you soon. Suspension. Yeah. Oh, you got SRAM on this. SRAM gears. Oh no, you're going to break a derailleur or something. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. 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 I didn't know what the difference is. Drop it in! <laughs> yeah, that's the other one. The other one. Yeah. Not as much as you might try. I'll be able to do a bit of a novelty on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll be having a word with myself. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Hopefully we can fix the old Cannondale up later and get that out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I took it up and did the tanifer with it last week and set the drill into the wheel. <laughs> well, we got a bit of chain slap. Yeah, there must be so many of these type of bikes in that <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I like this stuff. <laughs> It's up a little bit. Yeah. Chain slat. Yeah. Oh my gosh.
<laughs> it's fine. It's working good. The chain slappers I'm not used to. Yeah. But yeah. But yeah, other than that, it's all right. How's the rigidness? Perfect. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I should have, but... Did you do, did you do TH or roadside? Roadside. Yeah. I got like two, I don't know, like three centimeters of air. The berm, it's half a berm. So the first day of riding went really well and then the second day my partner and I went out for like a little little ride around this it's a pretty simple family route just a loop by the tree walks and then we came across this stump and I thought it'd be cool to get a clip of the stump jumper jumping a stump um, but it didn't go so well So I did this jump once and it went okay but it didn't quite look good on film and then I did it again and the second time the hub flange snapped. So yeah, it's crazy that it survived all the riding the day before but then this tiny little like 10 centimeters of air jump managed to snap the flange but if you look back at these previous clips before actually riding it um, it had sort of like a stress mark in the hub flange, you can see here. So the damage is there beforehand, but uh, this finally finished it off. Luckily we weren't too far away from the car, so this is how we got the bike back. I just strapped the brake up. Even with the broken hub flange, the rear wheel isn't actually that buckled. 
but it did hit on the brake. So we'll rebuild the rear wheel with this rim and probably with a hub to match the front. Um, so that or something similar. So we've also got to service the rear shock or find out what that squeaking is or both. But that's pretty much it for the stump jumper video today. This is the first full suspension bike that I've done on the channel and my first full suspension bike that I've had in a while and I really enjoyed it. Uh, most of the 90s mountain bikes that have rear suspension are just like pogo sticks or they don't climb well or a combination of both. But this feels really nice compared to like a hardtail bike. I do have the shock quite stiff so that probably helps a bit with it as well. The brakes, really impressed with them. Oh, something to note real quick that this rear, this peg sort of behind the brake should be hard up against the fork. Coming up, we've got a few really cool bikes. This is an Avanti Revolution E-Stay. So this is a local company from back in the day. They did some really cool bikes. They're still around now, but they don't do this sort of weird stuff anymore. So Avanti Revolution. Some Australians might have heard of Avanti as well, but mostly a Kiwi thing. Got a cool bike, it looks like it's got three forks. <laughs> got a Kona Lava Dome as well, which is this cool sort of purpley blurple colour. Something that I've re really wanted, I never thought I'd own one, but an Ashiki Alien, Tantra Prestige Chromoly Tubing, and a really cool handlebar. This is the Moth Bar. Such a cool bike riddled with XT parts on it. Got something strange, a KDX, which is an old carbon fibre bike. I've just mocked it up with some parts here. Uh, the cranks came on it and it was already single speed. But these have removable rear dropouts, so some people do disc conversions and horizontal dropout swaps on them. It does have a bit of a, a fix here on the top tube, so see how it goes, but yeah, just mocked it up. Some random parts and stuff. Got a GT Tempest, an alloy bike, got a cool old GT, and it is 7005 alloy tubing, pretty cool. And last but certainly not least, a very special specialised rock combo. This is one of 500, and a really early drop bar mountain bike, sort of like a, the granddaddy to gravel bikes. So thanks for checking the video out, I'll see you again soon. Got a couple of builds that I want to do before the end of the year, so check those out. Yeah, I'll see you soon. Have a good one. Bye. That's nasty.